Hey everybody and welcome on back to Minecraft. I am so excited to be back here in our single player survival world. It's great to be back. It has been a little while. I hope you all have been enjoying our new SMP series, The Source Block, with some other amazing Minecraft creators. I'm super excited for that one. If you haven't checked it out, be sure to go do that. We have some great plans coming down the road and I'm very excited to get into the multiplayer side of Minecraft. However, last episode that we were in here, we came in and talked about how to detail out your city to make it feel more alive so it's not just a bunch of buildings. Adding in market stalls, adding in storage areas, little water troughs, some life using vegetation, and just everything you could possibly think of. It's really cool to be able to detail out the inner parts of your city and everything you got going on with there. There's so many different areas that you can really add life to and add things going on in the vicinity kind of as you're working throughout it. But... Our city still has a lot of open space to it and this very harsh cliff edge. We just kind of fall off here down into nothingness of where my shulker box mess of storage is down here. What I would like to tackle today is we're going to be talking about how to plan out major roadways inside of your city and how to kind of terraform this area out so it looks normal and something that we could build a city on. So we want to kind of soften these edges. And we're basically going to create a hill shape going all the way down to our wall that we have built up around here. And we're also going to be talking about how to add points of interest into your city. So it's not just all winding streetways and little alleyways and things like that. We want to add in some mega structures. They're not really mega structures, but points of interest, let's call it. The one I would like to be focusing on today is because we're so based around the port and water and trade would come along with that is that I want to work on creating a bank, a large banking area that would kind of rule over a lot of this vicinity. It's going to be somewhere floating out in what is now this area over here. So I think with that, it would be a great idea to kick this off into time lapse mode, get our roadways planned out and see how much of the terraforming stuff we can manage. As we are further expanding our city here, I wanted to quickly, while we're kind of torching up the area here to make it a little bit more safe when we build some sewers and some underground things later, show you all this image that is my general plan that I had in mind for what I wanted this city to be in the end. Obviously, it's pretty massive. It is very huge. You can see the inner port area that we have, which is on the upper side of the image here, that is really showing what we've worked on so far. We still have some large boats to be adding in there. We still have a lot of terraforming to be done, and we still have just so much stuff to be building inside that vicinity. What I really want to point out here in today's time lapse showing off this image and everything is the roadways. The roadways are the white dotted lines that are going throughout this entire area, and those are really going to help us determine districts inside of our city. Districts are something that we can use to really set the tone for each vicinity. So an old town, a slums town, the industrial area, maybe we have like the royal district and where you could see that big giant crown was actually going to be where we're going to have a future palace and kind of a mountain terrace place almost up there, which is going to look really cool. Think like the red keep from Game of Thrones s kind of that high up off the ground. But that's the general plan. Let's get back into it. Having this area completely lit up down here really makes me happy that we're not getting mob spots all over the place. However, the city is a little bit more dangerous now. I think what we're going to move into next is getting the rest of these roadways planned out from the grand scheme map that I showed you all earlier. And then I think we might talk about how we can deal with mob spawning in a city without just doing that everywhere. Off of where we previously have been building with our roads elevated into the sky, I decided to come up throughout here first and dot in some cobblestone going around the entire area to get those general roadways mapped out, similar to how we had inside of our overview. You can see that we are going to be stretching out entirely into the swamp area out here, which I don't really like the color of the swamp biome too much for the water because we're going to have this big port area and I would hate the water to look so murky and gross everywhere. Let me know what all your thoughts are and if we just change the biome in there. I can show you how we can do it. We won't be resetting the train or anything like that. Literally all it would do is change the color of the grass and change the color of the water and stop slimes from spawning, which I think would be okay. But let me know all your thoughts about that below because I don't want to do that if everybody's super against it. Anyways, coming in here, we're adding in the roadway and to make this thing interesting, it's going up, then it's coming down to where we are and then it's starting its way back upwards here again. Just adding some slope and variety into the train and making it very kind of curvy. It's not windy. I won't say it's windy because there's not too much going on with it. It's very curvy and natural and kind of progresses with the train. Then this guy up here, 
is what I was talking about, those points of interest, that grand area that we're gonna be working on here coming soon, where we want a giant flattened out area. This is purposely very large and very flat because it's gonna draw the player's interest to coming to explore this area. You're gonna instantly know you're in a grand fancy area purely by the way the area is shaped out. You don't even need to have the key point of interest building that we're gonna be talking about here soon. From just having this shape of where it is right now, you can instantly tell that there's gonna be something really big and really cool right there, and I'm very excited about it. Now that we have the big old road areas planned out up here, it's starting to look pretty crazy, I do gotta say. I'm happy with what we were able to get done. That was so much more cobblestone than I thought it would be. I went through three inventories full of cobblestone slabs, and that's insane, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> But it was fun. It was cool to be able to get all this stuff done, and I'm excited for where we're going to be able to go with this. What I want to do next throughout here is start to border up this area, making it feel that more grand feeling that we're really going for here. And I think it's going to help us out a lot with the idea that I'm trying to sell for this area. I purposely haven't told you all what the plan is for up here for what we're going to be building in the center. Or I don't think I've mentioned it before. But if I have, or if you think you got a good guess for what it's going to be, let me know in the comments below. But what I'd like to do now is while we're leading up to this area, this would be very boring if it's just open. If this entire area is open, we have this eight block wide thing and I kind of keep this eight blocks as kind of the open area reaching all the way up to here. So what I would like to do for now is these platforms are all 20 long. So if we bring out like four, maybe we go like five blocks off the end so we have some room there. And then we come over here and I would love to basically have some big plant potters, like some areas where we can have some trees and maybe a fountain or something and maybe make this like three wide throughout here. How much does that give us? One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, that is a little framey as well. So maybe we do something like this. That will give us four there and five here because this is basically going to be a people path coming through here. Carts can go through the middle and then we can have the same thing over on the other side. Or what if we just bring this over? one here so it's not just that straight hard line off of here it's not a straight straight line it's gonna be slightly widened out might be kind of cool all of the plant potters are in in a great way that we can keep this area a bit more mob safe is actually coming through here with a bunch of our sea lanterns on the inside and surrounded by the dark oak trap doors which i'm actually out of and i need two more but anyways, it gives us these cool plant potters that we currently have eight of them in here, four on each side, of course, to keep it symmetrical and going with that grand feel that we're trying for here. I'm gonna see if I can slow us down there. So you can see these kind of growing up this way a little bit here. Then our mega structure or our point of interest is going to be down in this area, which after I get these things in is we are gonna be working on playing that one out. It's going to be a bank, a very, very large bank. I think it's gonna be an awesome idea for what we can include in here. I'm so excited to do that. I think it'd be cool to have a bank as like kind of that one point figure over in this area. A bunch of people were saying do a cathedral or do a mosque or do like the castle out here or some big fortress. And I think like something commerce focused would be a little bit more interesting and kind of fun and different where I feel like most people normally go for like the giant cathedral and a castle. So I wanna do like a giant bank and have commerce kind of ruling this area. Then we'll have some smaller areas of worship, I guess you could call them throughout this area, because I do wanna include like multiple religions in here, some fantasy ones that we're gonna make up, but I've actually seen a large number of people down in the comments saying that we need to include like a mosque of sorts. So I think that could be kind of fun to make one here as like a subsection of papyrus or something over there so we can have it like an enclave of people who are living in the city instead of living back in their homeland of papyrus they can kind of come over here and still worship and still be included in these vicinities because i think that's something really important for a city is cities as much as they're for like one group of people you always got to kind of think about the general community of who's actually going to live there not just this perfect utopian idea that you have for everything going on around it so I think it'd be kind of fun to include all those different things. I'm gonna get these plant potters finished up. We're not gonna build the trees in them today. And then I'll be back with you after I figure out the plan for that big old thing over there. Copious amounts of mountain building later. It's finally time to show you all what we've been working on. This area has been absolutely insane. The reason I haven't been showing this stuff in a time lapse as like commenter question of the day recently is I'm actually working on a mega Minecraft mountain time lapse episode. So that'll be coming soon, but there's a little bit of a teaser on what's coming on all that stuff. And we have the plan for the bank. I like this one a lot. I honestly think I might, now that I'm looking at it, I mo might move it up a few blocks just to give ourselves a little bit more space on the back there. 
But the idea is, is we're going to have this front, front structure kind of jutting out here a bit more. These two inlaid ones right there and there are going to be two doorways. This is actually going to be up on a raised platform, which is probably going to be like slabs, like stepping up like five or six blocks to this point. And the front of the structure is extended out a little bit here. So it just kind of has that not a flat face going on. And then the back of it so far, it's just going to be a large box because I don't want the back of it to be too fancy. This is mostly going to be very reinforced stuff. We don't want a lot of windows because that's going to be where the vault entrances and all that good stuff. Then on the inside, actually, this is more on the top of it. I want to have a big dome roof, like a big old dome here in the center, kind of like what you see with those. I'm thinking like European banks, like the old school ones or something you might see in like hot, like one of the Harry Potter movies or something when they're showing the banks off. I think that'll be pretty cool. I'll tell you what, though, I think I'm actually going to move it up probably to right here. And then I think that'll be good. As promised, let's talk about mob spawning. Mob spawning in Minecraft is basically anywhere that's dark, but it can't be on slabs. So we're utilizing a lot of slabs here. So like this is a slab, mobs can't spawn on this entire layer. That's really helpful for building a city, but they can spawn right here. And we don't want to just spam torches everywhere because it doesn't look that great. It feels very old school Minecrafty, and it's not really the type of vibe I want to go for inside of my world. And as we kind of explore these areas, having the nighttime to be able to walk around like this can make things look really, really cool when you're walking around a city at night, but you got to always be watching out for creepers and everything like that. They can really, really ruin the atmosphere for you. So we have a few things that we can do to kind of help out with all of that. First off, in Minecraft, mob spawning starts from the bottom of the world. So if you don't light up the caves below you, that can actually help you with protecting your area up above. But we can do one thing a little bit better than just not lighting up the caves below us is if we dig our way all the way down to the bottom of the world and create some dark rooms, more or less, something that you think like you'd use in a mob spawner, for example, we can just create that dark room inside of our own world. And then that'll help reduce the mob spawning. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. To briefly interrupt this time lapse, we already found diamonds. I think this is a pretty good start. Maybe we should mine like this more often. Now that we've looked into dark rooms, we can start to do a little bit more terraforming work up here and start closing in this area. I think what my vision is for this top section though, is almost like a raised platform of sorts of where we're gonna have some houses bordering and shops bordering this entire way going all the way around it. And then everything else is gonna be a bit, bit lower down and kind of sloping downwards and things like that. But what we can start with for now at least is at least getting in what this stuff's gonna look like i don't think i actually have time unfortunately to get everything in today for what it's going to be but i think i can start showing you all a few guidelines here so let me get a few of these ones in and i'll show you all the rough skeleton of how i terraform these areas out and that should help with kind of finishing off a little bit more of this vibe that we're going for here and with just a few simple guidelines in going across this area we can start to really see the shape of this hill and what everything is going to take on once we fill it all in because right now in between everything is empty if you want to get a good idea of what it's going to look like if you're building a hill or a mountain or anything like that make the cross beams of like where you want to have those terrain levels going up for example then look at it from the bottom and you can really see the slope and also kind of similarly from up here you can see a little bit of how things will lay out granted it's not 100 percent perfect but it's a little bit better than what you can get normally so after that we need to start filling in the rest of this area but unfortunately i'm gonna have to leave that for the next episode 
I am way out of time here. There's a few things going on IRL right now that are consuming a lot of my free time. I need to, I missed a block right there. I'm gonna fix that and go find a commenter question of the day. Fixed up the missing block over there and that's all good to go. And commenter question of the day today is coming in from Cameron Miles and they're saying I'd love it. I'd love if you could stay on this build because I find it so cool that you're able to be so creative with the different shapes and textures of all the buildings. Keep up the amazing works. Well, thank you so much, Cameron. I'm thinking now that we have source block up and running and I can actually tell you all about source block because I was starting to get a little tired here in anticipation of that stuff coming up here. But because they're so drastically different and everything going on, I think that's going to mean I can stay in this city build and stay interested in working on this one for a lot longer as well. And it seems like a lot of you all really, really enjoying this one. So let me know what we should do next. I kind of want to work next on getting some sewers in here and then maybe work on building up our bank up here. But I also really, really want to finish up our front town square center area around this fountain, getting all of these buildings completed, like making it look like you can actually walk into this town and not have it fully completed everywhere you're looking. But when you walk into here right now, it feels so incomplete. So let me know what you all think. Should we focus on down here for the next little bit? Or should we go up to work on that guy? I kind of want to touch on sewers next though. So maybe we'll do sewers and then come back down here. Because a lot of y'all have been really, really interested in seeing how I would plan out some sewers builds. And kind of work that in with the city. And now that we have the roads laid down, that's going to be a heck of a lot easier to do. So let me know in the comments below what y'all want to be seeing on this one. Sorry, it's a bit of a shorter episode today. Again, time crunch on everything going on here. I'll tell y'all a little bit more about what's going on here in the coming weeks. But thank y'all so much for the support. Please hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you on the flip side.